welcome everyone for this time of worship. And as we gather together for this time of worship, I invite you to make sure that you have your uh, communion elements, uh, some bread, uh, some juice, uh, because we will be celebrating communion uh, near the end of the service. Uh, also, uh, for our announcements, it is uh, St. Andrews and Arthur is collecting for the Arthur uh, Food Bank. So if you're able to uh, help uh, respond to the needs of our community, uh, we will be collecting uh, during this time of giving. Uh, Non-perishable uh, food items will be collected uh, inside the uh, uh, side door. Um, and you can make a donation to the food bank through the church uh, by marking your uh, uh, offering envelope or uh, through um, a mail-in to the uh, church treasurer. Uh, and if you're th wondering about what uh, the uh, food bank is in need of, uh, they're always in need of soup, uh, crackers, cereal, pasta, and sauce. So we thank you for your generosity. So as we come together for worship, I invite us to enter into a time of, of welcome, a time of community. I know we're all in separate spaces right now, but we are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit, that we are part of Christ's earthly body here. So my friends, as we prepare for worship, I invite us uh, to turn our attention to our Advent reading. We are nearing the end of our Advent journey. And this week we are uh, looking at the candle of love. I invite us to join together. I will do the slides marked with a reader or R, and if you'd follow along with the slides marked with all or A. In this season of Advent, we celebrate God's love. Soon we will welcome the beautiful and radical love of God as Jesus Christ comes to live among us. We embrace our identity as God's beloved children and let this truth guide our decisions and relationships. In our homes and in our church, we offer hospitality and welcoming those we don't know, those who are in need, and those who are different from us. We demonstrate our care for creation in real and tangible ways through the products we buy, the food we eat, and the way we live every day. Together, we are a sign of God's love for the world. Candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, and the candle of love. Let us pray. God of extravagant generosity, in Jesus we discover the depth of your care and the links you will go to to save us. Forgive us when we ignore those in need, trample your creation, and refuse to share all that we receive from you. Teach us to love our neighbors, caring for each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So my friends, I invite us to uh, join together in song, singing Hope is a Star. And this is a song that uh, goes through uh, the different parts uh, of Advent, hope, peace, joy, and love. So let us join together in song. Joy in 
As we have joined together in song, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we come into your holy presence, knowing of your great love for each person. Lord, you have fashioned us in your image. You have prepared our hearts to share in your love, to share in your joy, your peace, and your hope. Lord, as we journey through this time of Advent, as we prepare room in our hearts and our lives through the choices we make, we do so preparing room for Jesus. Lord, the gift that you give us in Christ is beyond compare. The miracle of life that you have bestowed upon us is made fully alive through Jesus. Lord, as we prepare our hearts for the coming Christ, we do so because of our trust in you. You who is faithful beyond compare. You who has shown yourself through your word, through your Holy Spirit, through the prophets, through your revelation. Lord, we come to you as your people, transformed by your grace, renewed by your unending love. Lord, we don't deserve any of this. For Lord, we have turned our backs on you more often than we would like to admit. We have allowed our eyes to be transfixed on the things of this world, on idols that seek to hold our hearts even though they are empty. of accomplishments that we forget are made possible by your blessing. Lord, help us to turn away from all these things and keep our eyes focused on you, that the ways of this world would not lure us into a shadow of who you have called us to be, that the lies that have been told and we have believed would not hold fast to us, but that you would free us from our sins. Forgive us, Lord, that we might walk freely with you in the ways of righteousness, in the path of salvation. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our mission moment this morning is entitled Preparing a Place of Welcome. Being forced to flee from one's home and ending up in a foreign land is terrifying. There are often language, social, and cultural barriers in the new place that make settling very difficult. Rani Abraham, the leader of the newcomer mission at St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Peterborough, Ontario, sees it, sees it as his calling from God to make this transition easier for those in his community. He does this through social programming, accomplishment services, and prayer gatherings. With support from Presbyterian Sharing, this mission has helped hundreds of people experience the love of God and provided people with a sense of belonging in Canada. 
This is one of our, the ways that our gifts to Presbyterian sharing help to transform people's lives through the love of God, through the gift of God's grace. It is time for our Sunday school time, and today we are talking about love. And there's many different ways of experiencing love. Uh, some people experience love through gifts. Uh, some people experience love uh, through time spent together. Some people experience love through a hug or just a touch on the shoulder, knowing that someone's there with them. Some people experience uh, love through the words that you speak to them. And when we think about how God shows us love, and when we think specifically about the love that God has shown us in Jesus Christ, we think about the gift of Jesus coming into our lives. We think about the words that God has spoken of his love for us through Jesus. We think about the time that Jesus spent here on earth. We think about how in the Gospels, Jesus reached out to those who were hurting, laid his hands on people's eyes, on people's eyes, prayed for people, spent time with them, loved them. And the love of God is unconditional. As we read about in uh, Paul's letter, first letter to the Corinthians, he talks about God's love. It is amazing. Sometimes we think that we have to uh, have certain accomplishments before God will love us. Sometimes we think that we have to, ha have to have our lives in order before God will love us. And the truth of the matter is, God loves us already. We have to be willing to receive that to open ourselves up and receive God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. So my friends, how are ways that you can show love this Christmas? Whether it's through gifts, spending time with those you love. And I know that's a little bit difficult right now. Um, maybe it's through a phone call, through a card. Maybe it's playing a game with your brother or sister, your mom or dad. Think of those special ways that you can show love to someone else to, during this holiday season, during this time of Advent, during this time of Christmas. As God has given to us, let us give to others. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for your gift of love, for your gift of grace, for your gift of hope. And Lord, we pray that as we gather today, as we come together in this time of worship, that you'll open us up to the opportunities that you have given to us to show your love, to share your love, to be examples of your love in our families, in our schools, in our community, in this world. Lord, as we turn our attention to our community and to the many things that are going on in this world, Lord, we pray for your healing, your healing on those who are sick, for those who are suffering with cancer or HIV, for those who have other illnesses. And there's a great deal of them out there. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be at work healing bodies, minds, for those who are suffering from depression, from those who are worried about their future, for those who are uncertain about what will come and what might be. Lord, help them to hold on to your peace, to your tranquility, to your faithfulness, Lord. Lord, we pray for healing from surgeries, Lord, we pray for families that are going through enormously difficult times, that are separated because of restrictions, and yet there is a need to be together. Lord, join them through your Holy Spirit. 
that they may experience the fullness of your love and the love of those of family and friends. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. Bless them as they are mourning loved ones. Give them strength to face each day, that they would know that you are with them, that they are not alone. And Lord, we pray for the broken relationships that many people are experiencing today. Lord, I don't know what needs to happen for many of these relationships to be healed, but you do. Lord, we place them in your hands. We trust in your timing. We know that all things are possible through you. Lord, may the people have the willingness to work together to bring healing, a deep healing, not just a surface healing, not just saying everything is okay, but not actually dealing with the real problems. Lord, we pray. We pray for hope for each people, for each person involved to have hope. each person involved to see the other in a new light. Your will be done, Lord. Lord, as we turn to your word, guide us in its reading. Bless us with your truth this morning, that all may know your faithfulness. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our readings this morning come from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, and from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And Paul writes, Now to him who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings, has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. And from the Gospel of Luke, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you womb and bear, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob. There will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child, will be bor- the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. As we are looking at love, we experience love in a number of different ways. As I mentioned before, there's different forms of what they call love languages. And many times we see pictures of of people showing love to each other, whether it's through a kiss or a hug 
or holding hands. And here is a picture of two hands ready to receive, but also hands that are dirty, that are rough. They're not smooth. They're not exactly what we would consider pretty or handsome. But they're hands that are able to give love and to receive love. We have to remember that love is not just an emotion. It is a choice each and every day. Many times we equate love with an emotion. We use phrases like, I fell in love. And I've mentioned this before, and I've used this analogy, but how many of us have fallen down? If we're sitting here today, unless we, the only time we have fallen down is we fell into the, our seats, or where we're sitting, or into the pews. If we have fallen down other times, then we have gotten up. And if we use that analogy as we fell in love, then you could also use the analogy, I fell out of love. Love is not just a feeling in the heart. Sometimes love is tough and it is hard because it is a choice. It is a choice that we have to make each and every day. We can choose to love God. We can choose to love those around us. We can also choose not to. There are times in our lives where we might think that if something goes wrong, that I won't love that person anymore. The reality is, is that love is not as simple as like. When I was younger, I did not like a lot of things. And now I have learned to like them. Like changes. But here's the interesting thing about love. You can love someone and not like them. Let me repeat that again. You can love someone but not like them. And I know that seems radical because in our, in our, in our ideas and in our minds, we have equated love and like as just sort of on the same spectrum. But love is, is deeper. It reaches down into our, to the core of who we are. And as if love is a choice, there are times when we love the people in our lives, but we don't like them at the moment. But we choose to love them and try to honor them. And sometimes we do a very good job at that. Sometimes we do a very poor job. But when we think about love, it, love is not just liking. I like certain chocolate bars. I love my family. Now, sometimes people, you've heard someone, I love that chocolate bar. And then they, and in the next phrase, they love the person that, whether they're in a relationship with, them, whether it's a mother or father or a child, You've just equated that person to that chocolate bar. For some people, it may feel like it's a step up. For others, it feels like it's a step down. But love is so much deeper than just liking. And when we hear from the gospel, uh, Mary was living out her love for God each and every day. And the angel Gabriel comes to her and says, you have found favor in, with God. That she didn't need to be afraid. But you see, Mary's love for God was also a reaction because God first loved her. God first loved his people and they were responding. Some people responded very well. Some people kind of brushed it off as, eh, I don't have to do this today. But she lived out her life loving God. And the angel Gabriel comes in and says that God has found favor with you. Now, when we think about how Mary lived out of this love, uh, what did it look like? It would have been living life faithfully. It would have been following uh, the precepts, following the law, 
It would have been f- being honoring her mother and her father. It would have been uh, showing uh, that love that God had given to her, uh, to family, to friends, to her community. It would have been following the Ten Commandments. It would have been following and, and sharing and allowing people to see the blessing that God had given not just to show it off, but so that they could experience that same blessing themselves. And when we think about the people in our lives that we value the most, a lot of times it is because they invite us into sharing their blessing. They share a blessing of love, of grace, of hope. They share a blessing of peace. They share a blessing that they have received from God. We don't always uh, articulate it that way. Let's be honest. But it is what God has given to us that we are able to share with other people. And this is what, part of what Mary did. Uh, Mary was willing, um, when we think about this, what did Mary's agreement to uh, going along with what the angel Gabriel said, that she would become pregnant? What would, what would this act of love look like? Well, first off, we hear that it was her willingness to possibly be abandoned by her fiancé. And we might think this is just kind of uh, wrong, and yet it was a real possibility. She trusted that God said, do not fear. And she went along with us. But this was a possibility. That her love for God was more than her love for her own safety and her own security. That she trusted that God would continue to take care of her. Uh, Mary would have faced uh, social ridicule and and disbelief. That when she became pregnant, would people actually believe what she said, that she was visited by an angel? Or they believe something else. In our own day and age, who would believe what? Do we think that they're lying? Do we think that something's wrong with them? So Mary was agreeing to all this possibility. She was also agreeing to being sent away. It was a practice of, uh, even in our own country a number of years ago, that if uh, someone became pregnant out of wedlock, they were sent to a relative's for X number of months. And I wonder if this is kind of what happened here. It doesn't say exactly that in the uh, scriptures. And when we hear about uh, Mary going to visit Elizabeth, we hear about this joyous event of these two uh, women who are with child and the children even bringing joy into their lives, uh, even in the womb. But here, Mary is leaving the place that she knows to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. Mary's life, she was agreeing to, to flee from danger multiple times, to be uprooted, to be living in squalor at times, to be separated from family and from friends, from everything that she's known, even her way of worship. When we think about her going off into Egypt, she left everything for God. Her life was a life that had so many ups and downs that it wasn't a normal life. I know we're going to ask what is a normal life, but that's beside the point. Mary's love of God did not put her in a place of strength. But it gave her strength for where she was. 
because it draw her, drew her closer to God. So it didn't matter where she was. God didn't elevate her into a, a palace that was surrounded by guards in a safe place. But her relationship with God, no matter where she went, no matter whether it was in her own community or in a, a barn or a barnyard in Bethlehem, or whether it was fleeing to Egypt, or whether it was at a wedding feast in Cana, or watching as Jesus was crucified. Her love of God stayed with her her whole life and got her through all of these tough times. Love isn't easy. Loving God isn't easy. But throughout all this, from this act of love, God blessed her and each of us. Are we willing to allow things that don't look pretty, times in our lives that are tough, that we'd like to forget about, instances where we can't do what we want, are we willing to still love God and love those around us and be thankful in those times? So that as we draw closer to God, even though it's not the way we envisioned it, it is still what God has for us. And God will bless us even in times like these. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you. We thank you for the love that you have shown us and invited us into a loving relationship with you. Lord, as we see through the life of Mary, her love for you was life-changing. Lord, we sometimes think that as we draw closer to you, our lives will get easier. And yet, if we look at Mary's life, it wasn't a life of ease, but it was a life filled with your providence, with your love, with your grace, with your hope. Lord, as we journey closer to, to Christmas, may we be filled with your hope, with your peace, with your joy, and most of all, with your love that we would be rooted in you and not in ourselves, that we would be made alive in your grace and your forgiveness and not be focused on our desires, on what we have and what we don't, because what we need is you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our communion hymn, at this time is a communion hymn for Christmas. And we will be singing the first four verses uh, in the celebrating communion and we'll uh, close off with the, uh, with the, uh, our, the fifth verse.
So my friends, as we have sung together, as we have joined our voices, let us also join together as we proclaim our faith, saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All who seek to know Christ, to know his love and his grace, are welcome to partake. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have prepared a banqueting table for us. Lord, as we come to this table, we remember the night that Jesus was betrayed. We remember the Passover feast. We remember all that you have done and all that you are doing. That from the beginning of time, you have placed in our hearts a desire to love and to be loved. And yet too often, we have tried to fill that desire with the lusts of this world instead of your unconditional love that brings life and renewal, hope and peace. Lord, in our sinfulness, too often we have turned away from you. And yet you have come to us in Jesus Christ. You have called out our names You have reminded us of your many blessings, of your eternal love for us. Lord, as we come to this table, as we come in the name of Jesus Christ, that through his life and death and resurrection, you have reconciled us to you, that our sins are forgiven, that we are made whole, that we are no longer slaves, but heirs in Christ, that we are made as to one body through your Holy Spirit, who binds us together in your love, who equips us to serve you in this world, to share your many blessings. Lord, be with us as we commune together. Grant us your peace. Fill us with your hope. Surround us with your love. Enliven us with your joy, that Christ may be with us. Lord, we pray for your blessing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup. And again, he gave thanks. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. So my friends, we eat and drink in remembrance of the gift of grace of the love and salvation that God has given us for the reconciliation that he has poured out to us in Jesus Christ. Let us take the bread and eat in remembrance of Jesus. The body of Christ, broken for each of us, that we might find wholeness and renewal. cup of the new covenant poured out for us 
the cup of salvation given to us, that we might drink and be thankful of the love that God has given to each of us through Jesus Christ. Let us finish singing a Chris or a communion hymn for Christmas. May we go today with the blessing that God has given us in Jesus Christ. May we go today filled with his love, that it might well up in us and overflow and be shared with those around us. May we go into the world to share God's blessing, to be ambassadors of Christ, to be ambassadors of God's love. May we go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. My friends, I invite us to join together as we sing, Go in Love. It has been great to come together in this time of worship. May God's blessing be with you and guide you. May you have a Merry Christmas. May you be at peace in this time of trouble. May you know that you are not alone. There are many people who are just a phone call away. Don't be afraid to call. Until next time, my friends. Amen.